Hey guys, it's Matt bringing you the next episode of Logical Redstone. Today we're going to be talking about encoders and decoders. And by the way, this video is going to have a lot of connections to binary, but if you don't know binary yet, you should be able to understand this video just the same. It's just that it'll be a little bit easier if you already know it. Uh, in the next video of this series, I'm actually going to be going over binary more extensively. So if you want to wait for that, you can do that as well. Let's get right into it. So first we have encoders. An encoder is a device that takes in one input at a time and it outputs a code that resembles that input. In other words, it takes one input and it encodes it. The letters A, B, C, D represent the inputs on this encoder. And these three arrows are the three outputs that make up the three digit code that's gonna be outputted for each letter. And in general, encoders can have any amount of inputs and any amount of outputs. In this specific diagram, the inputs are A, B, C, and D. So we have four inputs, and like I said before, you can only activate one of them at a time. We have three outputs, which is telling us that no matter what input we turn on, we're going to get a three-digit code coming out. For this specific encoder, this is the truth table. So if we put in A, we want 001 to come out. If we put in C, we want 011 to come out. And in practice, it looks like this. You have lamps with levers, just like the Logigate video. If we input A, we get 001 on the output like this. Okay, so let's try to make one. I made this little circuit here, which has four lamps for the input and three lamps for the output. The input lamps are A, B, C, and D, just like the diagram. And let's make this truth table come to life in this circuit. So when we flip A, again, we want this lamp to turn on. Or for example, if we flip D, we want it to get D's code, which would mean this. Intuitively, we can just connect them up. So A only needs to go to the one on the right. So we take his line, connect it to the one on the right. B only needs to go to the one in the middle. So we take B's line, connect it to the middle. You can bring it over with a bridge. C goes to middle and the right. So you put it into here and here and make sure to put repeaters here so that they don't interfere with anything. And then D of course goes to the one on the left and you can connect it with a big bridge like this. And technically we've just finished our first encoder. So A gives the correct code for A, B gives B's code, C, and D. So congrats on making your first encoder, but there's a problem here. The problem is if this encoder gets any bigger, it's gonna get a lot messier really fast. You're gonna end up having bridges on top of bridges. You're just gonna have a lot of messy wiring that's really difficult to work with or to debug. And so we really want a design that looks a lot neater, is just more organized, and it'll be a lot easier to look at. The way we make this much better encoder is we take the output lines, and we bring them all the way back like this. Then you take each input line and you put it into a torch or a knot gate and you bring that line above all the output lines like this with dust on top. Now, all you have to do to finish your encoder is put torches on the side of these blocks that correspond to the code that you want. For example, with A, we want the code to be just the one on the right. So all we do is look at A's line and put a torch on the side of this block which is right above the line for the one on the right. And now, when we flip on A, it's going to depower this torch, which depowers the entire line, and any torches that were attached to this line get turned on. Let's just continue these codes, it's really quick to do now. B is right here, C is here, and D is here. And we're done, that's it. A will give the right code, B will give the right code, everything works perfectly. Yeah, this design is just way better. I mean, if you can see the codes with the torches, super organized, it's flat, compact. You won't have to deal with bridges or anything like that. And yeah, the only thing you have to worry about is if these output lines get really long, you do have to have a repeater on them, obviously. But that's pretty much it. I would just recommend only using this unless you have a really good reason not to. Moving on to decoders. So they basically do the exact opposite of what an encoder does. They take a code as an input and they give one output at a time. So in this specific diagram, if you put in A's code, you get A out. If you put in B's code, you get B out. Just like before with encoders, you can have as many inputs as you want and you can have as many outputs as you want. 
what this is telling you is the amount of inputs you have, that's how big your code is. So right now we have three digit codes coming in at all times. The output size is how many different things you can actually output using different combinations of codes. And this is our truth table for it. It's literally the exact same truth table as last time, except just flipped. If you put in the code for A, you get A out. If you put in the code for B, you get B out. Zero, one, zero should output B. All right, let's try to make a decoder. So this is our circuit for it. I basically just copied the diagram again. We've got three inputs for our code. And remember, we're making decoders now, so we can have any amount of these on at a time. And our output is the letters. So we've got A, B, C, or D. We should only see one of these come on at a time. Decoders are a little less intuitive to make, um, but let's just try it. So we want the 001 code to line up with A. So if we put in 001, we want this to activate A. So, okay, I mean, I guess I can just take this wire and connect it to A. That seems fine, right? Unfortunately, this is not good enough because here's the problem. If we take that logic and follow it to B, okay, now I put in B, which is just the middle one. I would bring it over here and activate it like that. So A works, B works, but what is C? C is both the first one and the second one. But wait a second, the first one and second one I already reserved for A and B. Yeah, that's a problem. That's not what our decoder is. Our decoder only activates one output at a time. In fact, it was already broken with A and B on their own because you can have a combination that activates both A and B. That's a no-no. So clearly we need something a little bit more complicated for decoders to actually work properly. The way I'm gonna try to explain it to you is with a combination lock. So imagine this is a lock to your house, your garage or something, and the only way that it opens, AKA this being on, is with a certain code inputted right here. So right now, the only time this opens is when you have the code 0000. Because as you can see, if anyone tries to guess the wrong code, it doesn't unlock. You need it to be this specific code. And the reason this works is because the only time it outputs is when all these are off. If you remember when we learned about AND gates, you need all these to be off, and then the final OR torch can turn back on. If any of these are not off, the torch turns off and that's the wrong code and we do not get an output. Now, instead of the code being 0000, what if I wanted the code to be something else? Like 0001. Well, let's turn on 0001. And remember, we want all of these to be off in order for this torch to turn on. So the way we do that is by replacing this repeater with a torch. And now it works as a combination lock for 0001. If we have any other combination, it doesn't work anymore. So this is fantastic. We found a way to make a combination lock to detect for any combination. We just put torches where we want the actual ones in the combination to be. If the combination was 0101, you would have repeater, torch, repeater, torch. And now look, I can't unlock it unless I put that exact code. 0, 1, 0, 1, boom. And this is exactly what we want for a decoder. That's what a decoder is doing. It takes your input, which is a code, and it only outputs when you have that specific code. So let's apply this and put it onto the actual decoder over here. The first thing you do to make one is extend all the output lines all the way back. Then you take each input line and you need to raise it up so it gets up to elevated level again, but then you want to basically make it snake like this. Then you want to put repeaters behind all the output lines. So here, 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 and here, and then put dust on top of here. Okay, so it should look like this. Now what you need to do is for each code, you need to replace the repeater with a torch, just like I did on the combination lock. So for A, we want it to be 001. So we go to A's line, and replace this repeater, which would have been powering A, and turn it into a torch on the side of this block, just like this. For the B line, we go back and follow it out, and we want it to be 0, 1, 0. So we take this repeater, which would have been powering B, and we turn it into a torch that now powers B. For C, we want it to be 0, 1, 1. So we take these two repeaters, replace them like this, 
and two torches. For D, we want one zero zero. So just like everything else, it looks like that. And the final step is to take the outputs and invert them because you remember at the end of my combination lock, I had a torch that was oaring all of the inputs together. And there we go. That's our finished decoder. So now if we type in a specific code, let's just try C for example, 0, 1, 1, we get C. If we type in the code for B, which is just 0, 1, 0, we get B. Awesome. The last thing I want to show you is how these might actually get used in your circuits because I mean, they're pretty cool, but it's not really obvious why they're useful at first. So I just want to show you a few examples. The, the main reason I think, and I think this is probably the most popular reason in real life to use them. I'm not exactly sure because I don't actually have a degree in this stuff, but I think it's to actually uh, make the amount of lines that you're using smaller, right? Because if we want to transfer seven lines over a long distance, you can actually encode them into just three lines and then you can decode those three lines back out into seven. So for example, if we want to transmit uh, this one, check it out. It traveled over the three lines with its three digit code and it came out in the exact same spot over here. So yeah, to save space, I think that's a really, really nice reason to use encoders and decoders. And then here's a cooler looking example. What we're doing here is we're taking four inputs, one, two, four, and eight. If you know what binary is, that means we're inputting a four bit binary number. That binary number is getting decoded into a number zero through nine. So we have 10 lines total here. And then once it decodes into that specific line, it then encodes into the segments of that number on a display. So right now we have none of these on, which is why it's displaying zero. If we turn on just the one, it gets decoded into the one line. See how this second line is off now. And then that one line's torches turn on, which are the one's segments. So we input a one and we get a one on the screen. If we want to put in a five, we can do that by inputting four and one, which again gets decoded into a five and then encoded into segments. And it looks like a five on the screen. So this is a really organized way to make a four bit binary to seven segment display machine. That's it. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. As always, the world download is in the description for you to try out. Bye.